Hello, everyone, and welcome to the new season of the Purposeful Life Show with your host, Adrian Starks. I'm excited to share some new updates of the show with you, starting with a new look, sound, and energy, as well as a variety of guests coming aboard with intriguing topics of conversation. I hope you enjoy the new level of energy that will be brought to the show. Thank you for all of your support since the very beginning in 2019. Wow, it's been three years already? (laughs) Because of you, the Purposeful Life Show is now in the top 5% of all podcasts globally, and we aim to get it into the top 1%. Continue listening to the show and share it with others. You can also now listen to the show on my Facebook page at Adrian Starks, where you can comment in real time and communicate with me about your aha moments. Thank you again for all of your support. And let's make this one hell of a year and be purposeful about doing that. Wishing you all much love and success. We all need relationships. But what if your relationships with a friend, partner, or spouse is currently facing some problems? Do you find yourself arguing, fighting, or feeling misunderstood? Maybe there is something you can do to change that and go and grow in a better direction. Stay tuned for our all-new episode on the Champion Up podcast called Courage in Relationships. Hi, my name is Adrian Starks, and welcome to the Purposeful Life Show on the Champion Up Podcast. This podcast is for the courageous creators wanting to create a life of meaning, adventure, and fulfillment, all while helping to make the world a better place. I'm happy you're here, and if you're new to our show, make sure to give us that five-star rating and subscribe so you don't miss out on future episodes. Also, connect with us on Facebook and Instagram at Champion Up. It is always that one idea that could be your breakthrough. It's time to step into your courage and believe the champion in you. Hi, welcome to the Champion Up Podcast and the Purposeful Life Show. My name is Adrian Starks and I'm your host. I'm so excited to have you back for another episode. Before we get started, go ahead and give us that five-star rating and subscribe to the show so you don't miss out on the amazing content coming to you weekly. Also, go to the championup.net website because we have those Champion Up Tiger shirts that are ready for you, and they are limited and are going very fast, so get your shirt before they're gone. Go to championup.net. Today's a very special episode, and we're going to talk about courage in relationships, and ooh, do we need that these kind of days. I know I need it. And so I'm excited to bring on a special guest today. Her name is Maureen French, and she's a registered clinical counselor in the province of British Columbia, with a Master of Arts in Counseling Psychology. She has been interested in what makes a relationship successful since she learned her parents' first marriages ended. She's had a fascination of how individuals and relationships work from a young age. Maureen has over 20 years counseling experience in a variety of government, community, healthcare, hospital and private counseling settings, as well as inpatient and outpatient psychiatric settings. She supports and consults with young adults, as well as adults in relationship issues. Maureen, welcome to the show today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. We're excited to have you on the show today because I really feel like we are in this state where many people have problems in relationships and relationships is how, I guess, human beings and how we respond to one another, right? Well, relationships are how we actually have happiness actually if you're not in a relationship Ah, your life satisfaction is often lower your your health is not as um, great Uh, if people who are um, single often their life expectancy can be a lot less Um, we do better Uh, we need connection so if you don't have people that you're connected to then you are most likely going to be less successful and less um, able to achieve some of the goals that you're hoping to achieve because you need that support. You need that person to cur- to have the courage to, uh, to be uh, vulnerable with. Oh, I love that. Have the courage to be vulnerable with, but let's go back here. You said that being single is a left is a, is a less life expectancy. What? Yeah. Are you kidding me? No. That, so what the research found is that people who are on their own, living on their own mm-hmm. without a spouse, actually have less satisfaction in their life. 
in general, mm-hmm. and their health is more at, at risk of being, uh, they have more health problems. They die sooner too. Now there's a, there's a trend towards women being more satisfied uh, out sometimes when the relationship ends. Uh, that mm-hmm. has to do with workload. There's still a, per, a larger percentage of the household workload is, is on women. And now that they're managed, they're trying to also balance uh, careers and children that often will have some de- negative impacts on satisfaction in the relationship. But other than that, overall, most people do better when they are actually in a relationship. We need connection. We're not creatures who can live in isolation. Um, so I, you, I love that. Yeah. Yes. I, so you, I mean, all the anything that um, they've done, like I think there's a study with plants where they had uh, people talking to a plant and the t- plant has silence and no uh, no interaction with another person and the plant who uh, is talked to actually um, and uh, you know nice words are said to it or it actually does better so. I agree there's a saying that you know no person is they they say no man is an island but I always like to say no person is an island because we do really need each other and I love the fact that you said that although because there's a lot of single people out here and I'm gonna go ahead and just put it out here I'm one of those people but we also need to have good relationships, have good friends, good people around us, and to not be afraid to have the courage to be vulnerable, to reach out and to know that we can't be alone in certain things. And I'm so fascinated by this concept and this research you've done, Maureen, on this. Oh, and I, I, wanna ask, I just read it. <laughs> you read it. Well, that's still research. You still read it. I mean, I consider when you're reading and you're doing things to you know, to take in more information so you can teach. That's research. But yeah, you read it. So (laughs) how long have you been doing this particular type of work? Uh, So with couples, I've been, it's it's over 10 years now. Um, Okay. uh, But I've actually been studying couples since I was probably about seven. I I realized one day, that's how long it's been. I, I was interested in what my what was going on with my in my own family? My parents were both in their second relationship. I'm I'm mm-hmm. the byproduct of that relationship. So they had been married before. I was I found myself very curious about what like family photos. Where my mom's with another her first husband, my dad's with her his first wife, and on the back of the pictures it says things like uh, Lawrence and her his sweetheart and. Uh, they look happy, and so what? What happened? So I was, I was, I was curious about them, and I was curious, and I found myself asking lots of questions uh, about relationships as a young adult. So when I was doing my masters, I thought I think that the area I want to focus on is couples, because that's the thing I'm, I find interesting. Whether I was um, for my own use and just out of curiosity, like what, why. Why are um, people I'm working with who have long-term relationships, what makes their relationship long-term, and why were their stories different? They weren't, right. they weren't telling me the exact same information. So I would ask questions like, well, is it better to put the kids first or your wife first? A male client, or not clients, client, colleague. And then they would give me different answers. So I found that really interesting. So I thought... When I, you need when you go to do your masters. I was bored at my job, so I need some more. I need something <laughs> more challenging, and that was what I always wanted to do was do therapy. Um, so I thought, well, I'm going to focus on couples, and so that's what I've been doing, focusing on I couples. Love, I love that. And Marie, you have a lot of clients that you work with, and you're quite busy these days. So with your experience with your clientele and helping so many people and relationships, what has been a common challenge that you have found for couples in relationships? Like something that you've kind of seen reoccurring that may be a challenge for people. I think so, one of the common uh, problems is that people get caught up in their perception, their idea mm-hmm. of what the problem is, their idea mm-hmm. of uh, what the relationship looks like and who's the problem or what the problem is. They don't necessarily look at it from all angles, which is what my job is. I can often see the different points of views or how they might have gotten to where they are. Um, occasionally there's a, there is a time when a relationship, there's a clear issue or a clear individual who's maybe contributing more to the problem. But in general, I think we all contribute to their relationships. 
um, and the problems that occur within that relationship. So I think that that's one of the problems is we get caught up in I'm right and you're wrong and you don't necessarily see it from the other person's point of view. I actually had um, uh, couples come and see me and then one of the members of the couple to book appointments separately to, to base and I found myself being caught in a situation where they were trying to convince me that their view of the situation was the correct one. Hmm. Just, just see what I mean of where that would be one of the issues. If you can't see that uh, the problem from someone else's uh, side, you can't really solve it appropriately. If you're caught up and I have to defend, I have to uh, keep my position, I have to go into battle with this person I'm in love with, who Which actually most people holds do. Yeah. all the power over me, um, it, power as in... Um, when we give our hearts to someone, it makes us vulnerable in that we have more likelihood of being hurt and um, having our worlds turned upside down if things go sideways. And so we, in, in that place, we decide to defend what yeah. we think is meaningful to us. And we totally forget about the other half in our relationship that what may be meaningful to them, and this is where you were saying the perception comes in of making the mistake of saying, I'm right, you're wrong. And the reality is that no one is right or wrong. It's just based on perception. Yes. I love that. And I wish I would have known you like maybe 10 years ago or 15 years ago when I was in relationships. Because <laughs> I did. I was always that person like, I'm right. That person's wrong. They got the problem, not me. But now I understand what you're saying is that it is about perception. And if someone's listening to this right now and you're in a relationship that's not going the right way or it could be doing better, would that be a friendship, personal relationship? What Maureen just mentioned to us is that what is your perception right now? Are you blaming the person for what's going on in the relationship for you not being happy and not feeling comfortable? Or are you opening up and sharing with them how you feel but not blaming them? You know, we don't want to say, well, you did this to me. You made me, you made me angry. That's what a lot of people do. Instead, we could probably say, well, this is how I'm feeling right now toward this whole thing. And this is where I'm coming from. And I just want you to know that. Now, this is where Marina is saying, this takes courage because at that point you are vulnerable. You have opened up that you are not happy but you're taking responsibility for that. And I think that's the most important thing is to do that. And so, Maureen, now, I love the fact that, that you're doing this. I just want to give a little disclaimer there. There are times when you actually cannot uh, be responsible. So, for instance, mm -hmm. when there's abuse, you're a right. person being abused. You actually cannot be the person who... Uh, takes the responsibility because that is often what happens when people are being abused. They blame themselves first. I that must provoke them. She, she's mad at mad and uh, throwing dishes because um, I'm a jerk. And, and sometimes that is the case. We are, we are, we have provoked our partners to a point where they mm -hmm. maybe lose their, their, um, control over things but in most cases that's not where we need to be responsible we have, people have to be responsible for their own actions um, but right. what I mean by that is uh, when you're you can't do it actually when you're in the middle of the argument sorry mm -hmm. most people cannot do it in the middle of the argument it's very difficult your own survival system your own stress response will kick in and, and one of the ways to get through a thing that's stressful is to fight. Um, the other one is to uh, flee or to uh, the other one is to freeze. So you, you, you are, your body is automatically read and your body is going to automatically do those because you've actually gone to a part of your brain, your brain where you're actually not using your higher thinking at that moment. So often you can't do it in the in the moment you have to step out of it you have to calm yourself down in order to actually be able to do it it's really hard so the, it is really hard and to step out of the moment to not and just not defend because most people want to defend in that moment but to step away from it. And i love the fact too that you mentioned the disclaimer about accepting responsibility and i want to go back on that as well too 
And that is so true. If you're being abused in any kind of way, it is not to blame yourself, but more importantly is to find a way out of it, to get, get, get away from it, to separate yourself from that situation so that you can begin to think about different things for yourself. But also in, in the midst of the argument, what you were just talking about, Maureen, is that most people will start arguing with each other. And then there's this battle between who can get in the last word, mm-hmm. yeah. you know, who can win. And that is something that I feel a lot of couples have problems with. And that is something that I've had a lot of problem with over my lifespan. And I have to catch myself from time to time, too, when I'm talking with my relatives or any friends. If there's a statement that comes up immediately, if I feel it's not correct, I want to defend. Yeah. And I come across with this tone that's defensive and I'm not aware of it. And it triggers them to be defensive. So what would you say people could do in this situation to avoid or to try to prevent themselves from coming across the wrong way when they're in the midst of a disagreement? I think that you have to realize that you are going to come across the wrong way sometimes and Mm -hmm. to give yourself permission and your partner permission that sometimes in the middle of a fight, you are going to say the wrong things. You might say hateful things. It's not really about that. It is, can we, can we get through the fight? Uh, and can we then be able to regroup and say, you know, our relationship is really important and, um, I, I need, we need to repair it. So there's always going to be rupture they're called ruptures in um, couples. There's always going to be ruptures. It's the repair that's the most important. It's not the rupture itself. It's the repair. I mean, you want to do as little collateral damage as you can during the fight. So calling your partner, you know, names and putting them down is probably not the smartest thing to do in the middle of the fight. Mm-hmm. That's happened. Mm-hmm. We, we Why do people your, do that though? Why do they do that? Why do they call names? We, we lose our ability to use appropriate language. We actually, okay. It's part of our brain function. When we are under stress, our ability to use better, higher uh, forms of language actually goes down. We're actually back. So when mm. we're in that stress, we're in the middle of that fight, we're no longer using our higher functioning brain, which is called the cortex. We're actually down into mm. what's called, it's sometimes referred to as the reptile brain or the brain stem. You're actually mm-hmm. down in that part of the brain and in the emotional part of the brain. And and it's that's the parts of the brains that are taking over. And so mm-hmm. when you're in those parts, your emotion you're being flooded by your emotions, you're being overwhelmed by the situation and you feel threatened. We um we feel very vulnerable in relationships because the person who uh, we're fighting with actually has the power to destroy our world, to destroy our mm-hmm. happiness. And we're also feeling judged by that person. We're also, one of the reasons people are feeling vulnerable is because what people really want to know is, am I enough for you? Am I lovable enough that you are going to stay with me no matter what? Or are you going to be the pers- another person in my life that rejects me and leaves me uh, with heartache? I was that person actually a while back. I totally understand where you're coming from because in you are expecting this person to keep everything together for you. Yeah. And then it's like this holding on of dear life. Or and then if, that yeah. Or if he or she loved me enough they they would um they would uh they would know what I was thinking or they would they would drop everything and, and come to my parents' house for dinner. They wouldn't disappoint me. <laughs> you know, for human. Yeah. Like, not even thinking about you in that moment, we're we're actually quite self-centered in lots of ways. We're often thinking of our own needs in the moment without without awareness. It's like an unconscious level. We're we're not necessarily operating from the bigger picture. We're often operating from what do I need in this moment, right? Like, so we're only thinking about ourselves and not really thinking about the other person. We're like, what do I need and why? Well, not. And that sounds selfish, but the, it's not quite like you're, you're, you're not necessarily, it takes a lot of effort to actually see the whole picture. Whereas I think often mm-hmm. we're so caught up in, I got to get my stuff done or um, what's the big deal if I go to my in-laws. We're thinking from our own, not just 
so I guess selfish is not the right word. We're thinking from our own worldview of the world. So if family isn't important, then going to the in-laws might not seem important to you. You have your own events in your life. You have your own perception of the world that then guides you on how you're going to uh, perceive things. So your perception might be different or it might not be a big priority. It might be not the value you hold. Maybe you don't want to, maybe your values are making money and your partner's value is family. And so having relationships with family then becomes important for them. And your value is I need us to have lots of cash in the bank. So is it important for us to address that in the relationship to find out what the values are? Would that be something you would possibly suggest and say, what are your values? And then what are my values? Would that yeah. be good for couples to talk about? Yes, but values in a different way. So we often think of values. Like I've had um, discussions with couples where uh, their behavior indicates a different value, but they're saying their values are these. So you have to actually look at where is your focus? In life? Are your, mm -hmm. Is your focus on X, Y, and Z? And are you spending all your time? Where are you actually spending your time, your energy, your money? Where is your focus? Because those are the things that are going to give you actually hints. Like, where do you like to spend your money? Where do you, what would you, if you could do anything with your time, where would it be? If it's golfing, then one of your values is golfing. It's not necessarily, which is not a bad thing. We think that that's a negative thing. So then people don't want to actually talk about their values in, in a more honest way. You know, it's interesting to me, uh, Maureen, that you brought this up because there are some people I've had this happen to me before in the past. They like you for who you are. Like they're attracted to you and they understand when they first start talking to you that this is what your focus is. Like if you're a career driven person or if this is how you function, they see that. But when they get into relationship, then it's like it's they try to control it. Then it's like, well, I still like you. I still love you, but I would like for you to do more of this with me, pay more attention to me in this area and to do less of this. So do you deal with couples like that? I mean, it's like it starts like obviously they're attracted, but one person may come into the relationship and feel like, well, now that I don't want you doing that anymore. I want you to do less of that and, and to focus more on me. Well, it's a biological thing. We um, need to procreate. We need to have kids. So in order for us to have kids, the biology makes it so that we it glosses over. We don't pay attention to those little things. Like uh, he leaves his socks on the floor or she's actually uh, really into uh, our, like the artificial, more of the artificial of how she looks, which is annoying. We, we let those things kind of slide in our, our perception of the person in order for us to have children. Mm. The first two years, you're actually uh, biology is running you, not, not even anything else. So attraction is, is uh, one thing, but it's also that um, – we wouldn't ever actually be with people if we didn't actually have this biology uh, working against us. So it, it protects us from, um, uh, it protects us, it, it keeps us um, interested in a person without all the little, and uh, ignoring their flaws. Flaws, I don't know if that's the right word. <laughs> the, the ability, of the, of, the, <laughs> the ability of the human race to continue to, to improve and increase. Oh, yeah, yeah. So we have a lot of things working against us in relationships. <laughs> <laughs> like, why am I feeling this way? Well, that's, that's, that's biology, you know? Uh, so my next question for you here is what would you like people to know about themselves? I mean, we just talked about the biology factor, which is amazing. Cause I didn't know. That. Right. I have all these weird we, facts running through my head. <laughs> well, Hey, let's go back to the next that fact about when we're arguing we move from that part of our brain that thinks about things from an analytical point of view, like we, we intelligence, we move to the other part of the brain, the reptilian part of the brain you mentioned, that is just like this part, which is like, I want to defend right now. And I'm, I'm feeling like I need to fight or, or, or to run. So that is a part that I learned about today. And we just talked about the other aspect of um, the biology. So what is, Something else that we you would like people to know about themselves in a relationship, like like this is what you you should not be hard on yourself on for feeling in a relationship because this is the way you are as a person or as a human being. 
Well, I think, I don't know, I don't like the word should, but <laughs> I think it <laughs> should get in the way of people's uh, in, enjoying relationships a lot more. Um, mm -hmm. So what, what I would say uh, is that I would like people to be aware that you all come from, each of you come from a history. Uh, you have, each have a history, um, your family, your family of mm -hmm. origin that has taught you how to be in relationships. Mm -hmm. There is no right or wrong way in general about being in relationships. That is about the two people, or we'll say two people, relationships evolving, so it may no longer be two people <laughs> at some point. Mm -hmm. And there are relationships that involve more than one person, or more than, yeah, being in a relationship with more than one person. But we'll just deal with the... Uh, idea of two people um, that you you both come with an idea of what a relationship should look like those shoulds again and that the reality is it's up to the two of you to decide how you want your relationship to be so okay. what I might see as this is wrong in a relationship it isn't really uh, um, wrong for other people uh, that everybody makes decisions. Well, if you are going to be in a relationship, you have to work with the person that you choose to be in a relationship with to come up with a common ground for each other. What's okay. going to work for both of you? What is the place that's good enough? Where can you get most of your needs met? How can you support each other during hard times? Because it's the hard times that really determine if a relationship will make it or not. Mm -hmm. It's the, the, when things are going well, uh, people often drop out of counseling and they don't see them and then they show up when problems happen. <laughs> problems, obviously. Yeah, they're like, oh, yeah, we don't need you anymore. But yes, we do need you. Uh, I see. I, I, I really see how that, that can be a consistent thing for people because we, we go in and out of problems. That's just part of being here on this planet. So... This is amazing information, Maureen, and I can see why you are you have so many people that come to you for some help for relationships, because this is what you've told us, just these things, that basic things you've been telling me today. I'm like taking notes and I'm going to use this in my life, and I hope the people who are listening today are going to use this as well, too. But there's so much more behind what you teach and you share for your clientele, and I would like to have you provide our listeners today with a means of contacting you. I'm reaching out to you because I know that someone listening to this needs help and a way of finding out more about what you do. Do you have an email address, website that they can go to? I have both. Um, All right. My company is called Life Balance Counseling. So it's, and my website is www.lifebalancecounseling with two L's. It's Canadian. Um, okay. Dot com. And then my email is info at lifebalancecounseling.com. Excellent. All right. Well, thank you for that information, Maureen. And we have come to the powerful part of the show that I love to do. This is the courageous creator question. I'm pretty sure our audience is waiting for this one. And this question today is this. What is one factor that you feel is needed most in helping a relationship improve and last? I think that if you can think about the problems as having two different uh, truths. So uh, each person has their own truth about what is going on in the relationship. Uh, that's what makes it complicated is that um, we don't see things the exactly the same way. If you and I were to write a story about the last 20 minutes, your story would be vastly different from my story. Because we have different perceptions of, of situations, every situation. We come with our, our own history that guides us uh, through our relationships. And we um, often don't realize that um, our perceptions of our relationship are guard, are are guided by all the relationships you've had, all the experiences of relationships, how you've interpreted all the information you've received through your life about relationships, what's 
what's supposed to happen in a relationship and what's not supposed to happen in a relationship. That's all um, actually informing relationships um, throughout it all. And it's always evolving. We're always evolving in our relationships through um, our experience of people and how we see the world and how we got treated in the world by people. Are relationships seen as dangerous or are they seen as um, loving embraces where you're taken care of or are they seen as places of danger those all guide us okay so i love what you said too about recognizing that there are two truths in this relationship that the perception of this person and the perception of the other individual and the important thing is that to understand that the person may not see the story the way you see it and that has to be at some point communicated and understood both as different individuals. I just love that. And I truly believe that what you're teaching and helping people with makes this world a better place, which is why I wanted you on the show as a courageous creator, Maureen. So thank you for being on the show today. Thank you. Well, thank you as well. And to our audience today, remember, there are two truths to a relationship and a conversation. And to make sure that you are aware of perception, how you see something may not be the way your partner, your friend, your spouse may see it. Doesn't mean they're wrong. Doesn't mean you're wrong. Doesn't mean they're right. Doesn't mean you're right. It means that they have a different way of seeing it. So relationships should be about understanding that and to also make sure that you Go on to Maureen's website, email her, and to get more information about how to improve your relationships, because I know I am going to do that. Until then, I encourage you all to improve your relationships and to be that courageous creator in your life. This is the Purposeful Life Show and the Champion of Podcasts with myself, Adrian Starks, and thank you for listening. If you've enjoyed our podcast today, don't forget to give us that five-star rating and subscribe to the show so you don't miss out on the powerful life-changing content on future episodes. Also, make sure to go to championup.net for even more life-changing content. Until then, I encourage you to be the courageous creator in your life.